Good afternoon, Al. I hope you had a great first day at Jane Beyond and learned a lot, had a lot of interesting conversations with your fellow Joomla lovers. This presentation is about languages. And I want, when I say languages, it's not the language that you coders use as a word li like PHP or something to generate data. Well, it actually generates data, but from your human brain making words and processing it to another human, that's called language too. That's what this uh, presentation is about. My name is Marijke Stuyvenberg, in case you didn't know how to pronounce. I learned a lot of people already within the community how to pronounce Marijke, <laughs> also English. Um, I'm since 2010 a member of Open Source Matters, almost four years now, currently in the role of secretary, but I started out met with my main focus on internationalization. That's a passion of mine. And that's not a surprise if you know that I'm a translator of Joomla, Joomla Core. I do that since 2007. I already had many, many, many packages released. So, um, and in daily life, I'm a saxophonist. So I'm a musician by profession, but professional, no, it doesn't really matter to me. Passion matters to me. My slides will be available on SlideshareNet, so if you see there are some links in there, you don't need to take pictures, you, you are free to do so. But you all ca always can look them up again on SlideshareNet. I'm from the Netherlands, obviously. That's a very tiny little country. <laughs> well, okay, that's a bit better. Um, in fact, it, it got 12 provinces, two of them only are Holland, and I don't live in either of them. I live at the far east side of the Netherlands, this part. And if I say far east, I mean really far east. I live exactly at the border of Germany. It's just a five minute walk from my home, and then I'm in another country, another language, another culture. That, that might seem impressive, and in fact, in the old days, it was an impressive place. By the way, those aren't Germans. That was the Dutch customs. That's a hundred years ago, so... Today, it's not that impressive anymore. You see a sign on the road, noting that we have other speed limits and other prices when you cross those limits. So I was glad I crossed the limit, speed limit, on my way here to <laughs> Jambian twice. Fresh. <laughs> so it's, it's not really that impressive anymore to cross a border. Still, it's, it's a line on a map and, and you could say nothing else, but it does have consequences. A lot of consequences like language, culture are, are already mentioned. And it could mean challenges to cross those lines or do business in this other country. But if I think of challenges, I think always in terms of opportunities. That's a better word. My situation isn't that special anymore. In fact, all of you live at many boundaries of many nations. It's just a click away from your home seat. And then you cross that border, you face those consequences and challenges, and you have those opportunities. It's called globalization. Globalization has a, a lot of impact, and with the internet, um, it, it, it speeded up immensely. It has enabled regions that were um, totally isolated from the world uh, to be connected more. It has impact on our education, on our knowledge, on all our exchange of information. So, in fact, we're all living in a global village, and we can easily uh, communicate in many languages. Of course, you could say, I don't want to do that. I don't want those consequences. I don't want to cross that line and stay in my local country. But in fact, that's a challenge at itself. I, I really would want to know somebody that 
doesn't go to a movie that is in ano another language or doesn't watch a television series. So you're always confronted with globalization. Now you could say, okay, when, when I do it in the English language, which movies are f uh, most of the time in the English language, I got it global. I, I can reach a bigger public than my own local country. And if you are native English, you're lucky. Yeah, that's not many challenges. And in fact, it's a world language. And in a lot of country, um, people have the opportunity to learn it at school. So with a bit of efforts and challenges, we could be as a non-English one also global if we use the English language for our website. So what you in fact would say then is globalization is the same as Englishization or westernization. Well, let's all use one language, very easy, one culture and we have a very happy world and we, are, we don't have any problems with those languages anymore. That would be the uh, seem the most easy solu solution for in fact I don't think it is you can put a lot of question marks for that and the first one I want to put there is why English is that really so obvious it is a world language yes um, is it the u most used language on the internet do we know that there was a research in 2013 on the most visited websites that uh, approximately 55% of them were in fact English. But that number, that number is not really the truth because if I look at the, the amount of um, websites that are the most visited, it's one million that's only three-tenths of all the websites on the internet. So, and if they look only at the home page of that website, say you have a multilingual website and your home page or landing page is in English, from there you can choose to another la language, that website is not in this 55%. So, it means um, the number is probably much lower than this 55 percent. In fact, um, it's it's not really known what the number is, but some sources claim it's below 50 percent. You could also look at the top 10 most used languages on the internet. English is on top. I have to say, this is a these are statistics from May 2011, so two years old. Doesn't seem much to two years, but we all know in the internet our growth is immense. And if you look at the languages below English, like Chinese, for instance, or Arab, or um, a Russian, for instance, and look at the growth column, then you see that probably I think Chinese would be the biggest language right now on the internet. Some people claim if we if we invent the internet today all over again, it probably would be in Chinese. So to me, it doesn't really sound obvious to use only the English language and say like, okay, we're ready, we're globalized. You could, of course, imagine then, okay, not only English, but let's do the Chinese and perhaps Russian, maybe Spanish is a big one too, and with a few languages, we're globalized, ready, and we have a much harmony in the world. John and Lennon sang about it, living life in peace. But I don't think he really meant that, because globalizing is not excluding, it's including. Including, recognizing all the languages, all the cultures that we have on the world. It's making our world so beautiful. So why, why lose them? It's challenging, of course, but what is globalization then? I like to think of globalization as a process or a cycle. And this cycle 
consists of two phases, internationalization, localization. If you look at the steps you need, the internationalization process must be looking very familiar to you all. When you do a project, you first think of what your product should be, then design it, develop it, test it, and you can go, in this case, to the second phase, localization, localize your product, test it, and put it on a local market, do some marketing, you're ready. Let's look at it a bit more detailed. So the internationalization, you have your product, you look at your requirements, still familiar to you, and then you start designing, developing, Say your product, keep it simple, is a shampoo. So you need to make a nice sh shampoo, decide what kind of hair it is for, um, make it smell nice. You design a, a good bottle with a nice label on it, then develop it, test it, it's all right. Okay, we can go to globalization because I don't want to sell my product only in one country, I also want to sell it in a couple of other countries. I'll go to the localization team, I'll translate all the text that is on the label, and then I find out it doesn't fit in that label because <laughs> there are many languages that have much longer, longer sentences or words. So, <laughs> in fact, if you are a corporation and, and there's money involved, you have to pay your employees, you can be go back to your design and do the process all over again and just do the math how many hours that takes. So there are a lot of requirements for internationalization. We didn't put that word internationalization before those steps before. These are some of the requirements, they're not all, because it obviously depends on the product you design, you want to make. So what languages do you need? What, what market is do you want on it? Is there currencies involved, the date formats? You name it, right to left languages, those are very challenging for us. It's, that's a real hard thing. Are the graphics involved? Make sure you have layers that you can translate, um, videos, subtitles, and um, legal requirements. Do I have to put a text on my shampoo that you don't put it in your eyes or something? Um, culture, colors, for instance. I, did, I don't know if you noticed, if you have drunk the water here, in those bottles, you have blue and red bottles. So um, now I must think very carefully because it is exactly in Germany it's uh, exactly the other way around than it is in the Netherlands. The one is with bubbles, the other one is without bubbles. <laughs> so everybody here in Germany is used to it and is taking the right bottle and I take the wrong one and I have to put my mind on globalization and say like okay it's something else here. So those, are those things are really important to consider when you start your process. And that means that this is still the internationalization part, the first phase. And that means you need locals in there too to help you out and say like, this is the best design for your product. Here you have to um, consider that it is a little bit different than in that other country. So localization is not only translation and in fact I can imagine that you most of you are probably coders that's what JMV used to be <laughs> at least think like okay but let's write a script for it and we have a translation and there are scripts of course in the world we all know Google Translate but if you look <laughs> at why when it is used well, for it is used, it mostly is used to look up a humorous mistranslation. I wouldn't advise you to uh, put your product on the market with a Google translation on it. You probably are not going to sell it. 
um, use local people to translate it. Translation is not only trans uh, or localization is not only translation. Of course, it, it's a huge part of it. It's transcreation. Now, if you type that word in your editor, your spell checker won't recognize it, but it Google it and you will find a lot of hits. Transcreation, making adapting everything to the local region you want to have your product on the market. After that, you can, of course, uh, test, and I would really advise you to do that. Before you put it on the market, have the last uh, things out of it, and then put it on a local market. And you want to do some local marketing too. But in this step, you r again need the source, and you need people from other countries too, because your ad mostly gonna end up on the internet and will not be only read by um, local people. In fact, this is a Dutch ad, and it's completely right. But if you read it in another language, it's really, really stupid. <laughs> so, <laughs> so the whole process involves um, everybody, everyone in there, from internationalization, from the first step, from the design on till the last step, to the local marketing, we need native English, native local people that are involved in this process. It needs education, negotiation. So what's the status of Joomla in this whole process? I told you before I was on open source, I am on open source method and, and my focus is still internationalization. So let's look at the status of our internationalization, localization process. Now first, our C CMS is great, and our code for localizing is perfect. It's all, yeah, well, perfect is a word. 99% perfect. But you, you can't find it any better, really. As a translator, I'm very happy about that. Um, there are, in fact, at this moment, 56 languages you can install Joomla in. And of course, already I mentioned uh, this morning our multilingual feature. It's one of the first CMSs to have it on in core. And the ease, how you can install it, also all those language packages. A couple of years ago, you had to find them somewhere and it was really, really hidden. You just can easily install them at the end of your installation. So we're great, we're doing great with internationalization of our CMS. Internationalization of our information is occasionally, but there is progress. We have some articles sometimes available in other languages, some links um, on the bottom for it. We have a page, what is Joomla, in a lot of many languages, but um, it's a bit hidden. They're working on it. It's going to be more obvious. The JCM is a very good example. We're, we're having articles in 21 languages in there and more to come. So, um, and of course, don't forget our local communities. They are doing a very good job in inform or informing the local people about new releases, about all kind of news there is in Joomla. So thank you, local communities. Thank you for doing that. Our documentation, this is uh, recently started, a couple of months ago, in February, I, I, I think it was. We started to have a translation on the documentation. It's going to be in steps. We started out with um, the glossary. That's a good place to start, I think. Um, at this time, we have 18 languages signed up and a lot more translators. For some, trans uh, for some languages, there's just one, but for some languages, there are about 20. So great, 
and a great progress can be improved, but I'm very happy it's there. And lately, marketing, um, we are busy doing the marketing in more than just English in a lot of uh, languages. In fact, um, I, I got an XX now standing there, but um, there is a landing page coming for Joomla 3.3. It's a bit delayed, also because of getting more translations in. Um, there were about 20 languages on the spreadsheet. I'm not sure what the number will be, when it will be launched, but that's a great, great number and very good internationalization process for our Joomla. We're not sitting back, we're not relaxing, we're not saying, okay, we're doing fine, great. There's coming a lot more and we need a lot more involvement then, again. And not only involvement of translators, we do have a lot of people that want to translate that are already always standing there ready like, okay, can I translate something? In fact, the documentations at this, ti this time, we have three, three languages that are completing already the glossary and waiting for more. <laughs> but we, ha we need to speed up to get them more to translate. So, But we can always use more people, of course. Um, but I also want to f invite the native English people in there to help with this internationalization process. We need you. We have seen we need everyone involved from the first step till the last step. The challenge, of course, would then our communication. How do you collaborate together in one project when you have so many languages? Well, of course, we use that one a bit too fast. We use the English language and it's a world language. But using the English language doesn't mean we are all communicating. We need, we need to understand each other. We need to understand where we all come from. We need to understand each other's languages, each other's culture, to be able to work more effectively together. I just got some tips there. And there could be many more in there, but I think this will help you out to start with. From local <coughs> people, like um, none, oh, I got it too fast again. Non-English people. I hear a lot, uh, excuse me for my bad English. I'm not that good in English. I don't know if I want to participate. I'm a bit afraid to express myself in English. Don't be. Don't let fear without withhold you. Your English is good enough. I I rather want to do a call to every every non-English people now. Never use that sentence again. Just put your name under it. <laughs> Thank you. Now, just put your name on it. They can see it. It's not an English name, probably. So, and we all just read all the messages. If it is coming from a, a native English person or a non-English person, doesn't matter. We just read it like it is from a non-English. Let's do that. If you're not sure what the other person told you or or tries to tell you, repeat it. Repeat what you understood. So if you didn't understand it the right way, this person can tell you, no, that's not what I meant. I meant it the other way. Or ask what you didn't understand. Don't be, don't feel like I'm dumb, I'm, I'm, I didn't understand it. Ask, and ask six times if you need to. And most important, teach your language. Teach your language to somebody in another language and teach your culture. Tell them about your culture. That's the only way we start understanding each other. For native English, please use plain English. Don't use all those fancy words. I don't know what they mean. And don't use slang. 
that's, that's really hard to understand. Keep it short. I got emails like five paragraphs and I like, I need an evening to read that and understand that and I don't have the time for it. Make it five sentences instead of five paragraphs, please. You can do it. If you're talking to somebody that's not English, be patient and let the other person finish their sentence. Don't interrupt. Because he, is, he or she is probably finding the right words, trying to explain what he means, and sometimes can, is not able to find the right word. That was my biggest fear today, doing this presentation in the English language. But, okay, I, I'm out of my comfort zone. I'm doing it. I hope a lot more will do it. And I hope a lot of uh, native English people will help us and say like, I'll wait till you finish. I will try to understand it. Don't put an emphasis on one word so that we are misunderstood. There are examples in, in this great community that we had a email threads, I don't know how long, that only existed because putting emphasis on one single word and not reading what was really meant. And teach your language. Tell me how I pronounce a word. Tell me what's a better word to use. Should I use must? Should I use should? I don't know. Help me. Help me with that. And tell me about your culture. I'm interested. I want to understand you. At the end of the day, we all need directions and we need to understand what direction we want to go. So let us have clear signs for it that we can all understand. So we've seen consequences, we've seen challenges. Most of all, we also saw opportunities. If we take the effort, if we do more, I said do more, I need to thank El Pecho for this, making these images. We did a lot of translators, provided the text. El Pecho created, transcreated them all. So applause for him. <laughs> thank you. If we all take this effort, take this, do more, and we can really, really be part of a big, opportunity, making the world a better place. Dankjewel.